me hear your voice here. How loud you are. Okay. La, 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 la. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you have a great voice. Oh, thank you. All right. Kayla. Kayla, where did you grow up? Where are you from originally? Okay, so originally from uh, Charleston, South Carolina, which is a very uh, bigot filled state. Um, it was also one of, it was mainly the main inspiration for me to travel actually because my mother only dated uh, black men since I was nine years old and the first shots of the Civil War were fired in Charleston. So, um, you know, long story short, I dealt with a lot of bigotry and I just felt like I didn't belong there, and any time I saw like a plane flying above me, I'd always just look at it and be like, "God, I wish I was just going on that plane, going anywhere but here." So, you know, it was a shit place to live, but in the end, a great place because it is what got me to um, start this life that I love. By traveling. You're a vagabond. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been to 27 countries. Um, every state except Hawaii. Um, and yeah, I've, I've ridden every major uh, freight train line. So you train most, you've, you've traveled mostly by train? Uh, when I was traveling, yeah. Freight train <laughs> was my preference. But this is the thing with freight how, train. How, how do you train hop? Well, what you do is, uh, there's this little guide you can get, but you don't even really need to get a guide, but it's called a crew change, right? So what this crew change explains to you is it explains, hey, every job needs a shift change, right? So what this crew change guide, when you're train hopping, does is it explains to you where the train yard is and also where the train is gonna stop. The old crew gets out, a new crew gets on, and that can take up to four to eight hours. Therefore, while they're doing that, you're running up the train with your, you know, 12 pack of beer, whatever you want, running, 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 to find your little rideable to get on it and pray to the hobo gods that it's going to take you where you want to go because, you know, sometimes they're unpredictable and you end up in a cold facility or some crazy shit, you know. But nowadays, kids are spoiled. They can actually use their cell phones to call the number and track the train and make sure it's going the right way, which to me, that, um, that to me is just uh, so... Uh, I don't want to use the word hypocritical, but the reason I loved hopping trains was the fact that, hey, it's a gamble. Maybe I'm going to go the right way. Maybe I'm not. Let's let fate decide. And you know what? A lot of times I ended up in cities I wasn't planning on going to, and then I ended up fucking loving them, you know? So that's why I... um not really into the whole new techno, Ooh, let's call this the number and figure out which way this train is going. Come on, man. Hopping freight trains is actually one of the only true American traditions, if you think about it, because it started during the Great Depression. People started hopping freight trains during the Great Depression just to find work, right? Like, okay, maybe people will want to say baseball. No, baseball is not, also not <laughs> a tradition. That's from England. Either way, um, man, when you're on a freight train, this is a thing that is so <sighs> beautiful and wonderful is that you are on this steel beast that only you and the conductor know that you are in this space, in these beautiful Rocky Mountains, or in the desert. Oh, the sunset line. You're riding through the desert, and it's just you and 
when you're going through the desert, you in Arizona, New Mexico, you see a billion more stars, you know? And it's just so refreshing to feel so disconnected from everyone and everything, you know? And just be under these stars, cozy in your sleeping bag, and, you know, hope that you're actually going to end up in Tempe instead of some whatever <laughs> shit yard in the middle of the desert. So, T Tell me about your childhood. My childhood? Um, well, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny because I have an opposite story of a lot of kids, right? A lot of kids, they had a shit childhood, and then, like, maybe their mom like found some sugar daddy they started banging and then woo they had a good childhood right but with me um my father uh was a rocket scientist um actually whenever i was five years old he was sent to saudi arabia to train what we now call a taliban at the time they weren't called a taliban on smart heat seeking missiles either way uh my mom was a decent world my dad was a rocket scientist I had a really nice childhood until I was nine years old. And then my father left my mom, left her with a bunch of debt, and my mom immediately went from like zero to crack whore in a second and um, started uh, doing her wares in front of me and shit like that, uh, which was clearly why I wanted to get the fuck, like, and this was in Cocoa Beach, Florida, because my dad worked, you know, for Lockheed Martin as a, as a rocket scientist. So long story short, yeah, it, it wasn't so nice, but it was also good because I started taking care of myself at nine years old. I learned how to cook. I learned how to scrap metal. I learned how to do a lot of things. So... I don't hold any grudges towards anyone because it made me a very strong female because, like I said, I, I've been taking care of myself since I was nine years old because of that, you know? And I was hoping when we moved to South Carolina, it'd get better. But like I said earlier, bigotry, da 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 So, yeah, as soon as I was off probation... Um, I fucking ran to the hills like fucking Iron Maiden, run to the hills. But instead of like the natives running for their lives, I was running to the hills for a freight train yard just to get the fuck, you know what I mean? <laughs> How far did you go to school? Huh? How far did you go in school? In school? Technically, I only have a eighth grade education. Yeah, I didn't go to school. I went to um, jail for truancy instead. Mm. Like monthly, I went to juvenile hall. Yeah, really that's... fucked up juvenile hall too. <laughs> really fucked up. They they actually uh, like got a huge lawsuit and are closed down now because they were severely fucked up and uh, the shit they did to us as kids was sickening. You know. Yeah, was... yeah. give me an example of. <clears throat> okay, well. One day they were having an Easter party, right? And they're going to have like these fucking uh, planes flying across, this and that. And I was trying to be respectful. I said, look, I'm not a Christian. And so uh, I, I, a lot of these girls aren't either. They're just in for it for the cake. But I feel like it's better if I stay back in the wing because I feel like it's disrespectful. And this one woman said, oh, you ain't Christian? We're putting you in the wet cell. And what the wet cell was, was, and I've never even heard of adult solitary confinement doing, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, punishment like this. What the what cell was, was it was a cell where you weren't even allowed to come out to shower. Once a day, you got naked and they sprayed you down with a hose. Therefore, your food, everything got sprayed down. I was stuck in the what cell for three days because 
I wasn't fucking Christian, you know? And, uh, but I wrote public affairs and got that bitch fired because even as a young girl, I um, was very much passionate. I mean, way more passionate now when it came to, um, I don't know. If, some, if someone's not doing something right, then they need to be fucking stopped, you yeah, know? Human rights. Yeah, I used to be a, a, like a dire anarchist and all that, but now it's just, I, I, I have a lot of some of the same beliefs, but I've also believed that, like the last quote from American History X, life is too short to be pissed off all the time. And with politics, it just fucking stresses me out. It just, and yeah, I don't know. So, plus I don't really want to get into the, um, for legal reasons, I really don't want to get into the subject of um, anarchism only because of past stuff I've done. Mm -hmm. There was kind of a reason I went to live in Europe for five years. Okay. Yeah. And tell me about drugs. Drugs. When did it start for you? Um, when I started, well, I, I mean, I first did drugs when I was like 12, I think. Uh, but it was bullshit, um, huffing, starter fluid, ether. I'm from South Carolina, man. We don't have real, well, now they do. But back uh, when I was a little young and the best thing you could get was core seed and cone and cough, dramamine, huffing duster, shit like that. Um, but as soon as I uh, started traveling and met real drugs, yeah, I used um, heroin, but I was a very functioning junkie when I was younger. Uh, for instance, like with me and my ex, Dougie Fresh, uh, Whenever we were strung out, we snuck into Canada, hopping freight trains together. Uh, we went to Europe together with habits on us because we always thought Europe, no, right? drugs are everywhere. We'll figure out. We'll find it. And as soon as we got to Europe, we found a fucking Pakistani. And that shit was, of course, fire because you're buying shit from a fucking Pakistani, not some New York fucking kid hustling where that shit's been stomped on a million times. But uh, how did I get to your, no, I worked. No trains. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. And I wouldn't want to get on a train either because I mean the barges, we considered riding a barge. A barge takes three fucking months to sail there. But no, we, we flew there and we worked uh, cranberry harvest in Massachusetts, which is a harvest I've worked on and off uh, for years. That's how I went to Central and South America as well whenever I was uh, 23 years old. And um, there's, there's so many different harvests you can also do if you want to ha like make money to leave the country. There's sugar beets in Michigan, there's uh, sugar beets in um, somewhere around Minneapolis. Um, you can go to Canada and work tree planting. Um, there's even like fire, like uh, which, well now with how hardcore the fires are, I don't know how it is, but before we used to be able to train um, as like a fireman and pretty much doing the grunt work, you know, digging up the stumps and whatnot. Sorry, I'm just looking for my lighter. Um, but yeah, that's how most kids uh, get around, get to Europe, and how a lot of kids also just, they'll work sugar beets and then go to New Orleans and just live off of their money <clears throat> from sugar beets and from busking which that's a f fucking beautiful life in my opinion. I don't know if you're happy living a life like that, you know, um, but uh, I got a little itchier feet than some of these kids that, that stay in New Orleans, but um, yeah. What's your drug today? My drug today, I'm, uh, I go to a methadone clinic. 
yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't fuck with that shit. And I'm actually um, slowly detoxing off of my methadone right now because I've been on methadone for two and a half years now, and I'm finally to the point where I feel comfortable enough where if someone put a bundle in front of me, I could say, fuck you, I don't want it. And that is the only way you should ever quit doing methadone, is if you have the power to be like, no, I don't want that shit. And um, yeah, it's, I like just smoking the fuck out some weed, um, uh, a couple beers for a nightcap, you know, maybe a nice bottle of wine for the dinner I make, and that's about it. Heroin? Yeah, yeah. I used to be a hardcore fucked up junkie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Real bad. How would you support yourself? How do you support myself? Well, I panhandled. I busked. Um, yeah, I panhandled, I bust, and that was it. They say bust. Bus busking? means when you go out to play music. And the term busking actually comes from the old Spanish word for buscar, which buscar means to search in Spanish. So it's like you're searching for money. So that's how the term busking um, came to be. Uh, so yeah, with me and my ex Dougie, who, like, like I said earlier, um, bless his soul, uh, yeah, that's how that's how we made uh, <clears throat> most of our money was busking and uh, yeah. Do you have kids? No. No kids. Honey, if I had if I had a child, I would not be sitting right here doing this interview talking about <laughs> this. Um, I have IUD only because it's almost like a worse fear of mine because. If I were to get pregnant, I would take 100% responsibility. And unlike a lot of dumbasses who just get these Band-Aid babies for their relationships, that's what I like to call them, right? Band-Aid fucking babies. Like, oh, we're not getting along to have a fucking baby. It'll fix everything. Yeah, I Band-Aid baby. Anyways, if I were to get pregnant, it would end my little career that I love already of traveling and busking and that's not something I want because I realize when you have a child, you have to become selfless, right? You have to become selfless for the next X amount of years and I am way too selfish, baby, to to even be dealing with debt. Oh, hell no, no, so you're, you're, no. So you're happy doing this? Oh, extremely. If I wasn't, then why the fuck would I do it? I mean, I guess that's a good question because um, some people <laughs> are miserable and in my mind it's like, then uh, fucking do something different, dumbass. I don't know. But uh, no, I absolutely adore and love my life. I, 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 I if I didn't, I wouldn't still be doing it. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's gotten harder and tireder, and I feel it now. You know, I'm, I'm in November third. I'm turning thirty-four, and uh, for instance, like my teeth, you could see they're rotten as fuck. I'm getting the pain in them. It's the age is starting to get in, but you know what? I'm gonna enjoy it as long as I motherfucking can because when I was 23, I told people, if I got hit by lightning right now, I would die fucking happy whenever I was in Central America traveling. And to this day, I feel the same way. If I were to get hit by lightning right now here in this room, I would, I would die happy because like Frank Sinatra said, I lived, I laughed, and loved, and did it my way. You know? I've always done everything, and throughout the times, I've also helped a lot of people and done a lot of work, too. It hasn't been just selfish traveling. Like, I did a lot of woofing, where, like, 
I went to like Guatemala and helped the village build self-sustainable water systems. Um, like I, I also did a lot of selfless things. Like Woofing, it's a project where it stands for like world organized something. I don't fucking know the <sighs> Woofing. It's a long ass fucking acronym, right? Yeah, of course I can't remember all of it. But either way, I did woofing for a while, which felt great because people help me so much. Of course, I need to give back, man. Otherwise, I'm just being a selfish fucking prick. So that's why I did a lot of woofing in um, Central and South America. Do you have any regrets? <laughs> it's funny you say that because I just had a conversation today about how I don't believe in regrets. I, you know, Edith Piaf, sure. the French, j'en ai no regret. Uh, I butchered that sentence. I want to get tattooed on me. Je ne regret ni. I have no regrets for life because to me, having regrets in your life, that will eat you alive. Having these regrets and life is too fucking short for you to have these regrets. So it's ironic you brought that up because I just had a long conversation with this kid about how I wish the word didn't even exist in the language because I, I personally um, don't believe in the emotion of regret and that you shouldn't have it. There's a lot of other emotions you could use to explain uh, empathetic uh, feelings towards something fucked up you did. But regret, no, I regret nothing. My life has been beautiful. I'm gonna die happy. And um, you know what? I've lived more in two years of my life than most people have for five, 10, sometimes their whole lives. So of course I don't have regret, huh? <laughs> uh, Lordy. You'd call yourself a free spirit. Uh, no. I guess I don't like calling myself that only because it like associates with hippies a lot and I'm I'm not a hippie and it, but but yeah I I am um I'm obsessed with birds. I have uh two parakeets. Um I have birds tattooed all over me. Um and because birds are they're so free. Uh and You've been in love before? Yeah, but I have a curse, you see, because uh, everyone I fall in love with dies. Um, my last fiance, Brandon, he died uh, last year in my arms in June. Uh, I woke up, he was dead. Uh, I just, I just mm -hmm. actually, have gone over mourning him. Overdose? Huh? Overdose? Wow, look at you, Mr. No, I'm just guessing. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying, yeah, you, you. But, but the fucked up weird thing was he was totally fine. He um, did his shit, he was fine, and I watched him like a hawk because. I wasn't doing the shit anymore. When you're not doing it, it's like so much more anxiety when people are doing it around you, right? You have like the Narcan ready, like 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 uh, sharpshooters. But he was totally fine. He went to McDonald's, he got a coffee, yada yada. And then he said, hey, uh, let's take a nap before we go home. And, um, <laughs> When I woke up, he was dead. And uh, I immediately did everything I could, but as soon as I woke up, I already knew 
it was too late because his lips were dark blue. I, I, I slammed them on his back. I put a Narcan in each nostril. Thank you. Uh, I called 911 on the phone and I said, hey, my fiance, he's not breathing. I need someone here with a defibrillator now. When the ambulance sh fucking showed up, these fucking fucktards, the fence is this high, right? With the little lock, and they're like, we need to wait for the cops to come to cut the lock. And I screamed, he needs a fucking defibrillator. You need to come here now. Now. And luckily, you know, I already knew he was, he was, uh, there was no hope. Luckily, one of the EMTs jumped over. He had the defibrillator. We put the stickers on him, made sure not to touch him because you'll get electrocuted if you even touch their bodies when they're doing the defibrillator. I mean, it's literally like <laughs> getting shocked with lightning. I was helping him and, uh, you know, they put the stickers on it clear and there's a, uh, a machine that tells you whether the heart is beating and um I knew uh like I said already I already knew he was gone when I first woke up but uh that's like the seventh boyfriend I've had die on me but he died in my arms the other guys that have died I wasn't, like, dating them at the time, like, Matt Lana, and a lot of them died of weird shit, like, Matt Lana, he died of sleep apnea, nails, he had a brain aneurysm, uh, Ben, Ben died of overdose, too, and the irony, too, is with all these different deaths, it's always when they're right about to fucking turn their life around, always. I've noticed that it's always right before they're about to go into rehab or about to do this that, boom, they uh, do that one last little push. Oh, I just, mm, before I go in there, and that's what kills them, you know? But um, I went to this amazing memorial this weekend. <laughs> in, uh, in Michigan, and uh, it was for my friend Scotty, and it totally has made me back to Kayla and happy again. It's so great. I went there, and I bumped into friends I hadn't seen in 10, 15 years that are actually doing good. They're I got farms and babies and one's got property in the Western Carolinas and I could just feel Scott's spirit like bitching at me like Kayla why are you even mourning this abusive piece of shit because Brandon was not a nice guy this guy who, who died you know and uh and I met this boy uh <laughs> His name's Aaron, but he goes by Owl. I call him Hebrew, which is Owl in uh, French. And um, it's so stupid. Me and him are acting like little high school uh, kids right now, which I've never uh, experienced since high school. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyways, what's your, you have any other questions? What's, what's the most important thing you've learned in your life? <sighs> to not take it for granted. Like, the one thing I love about living this lifestyle is that you become humble. You un it made me understand why, with Buddhist monks, why they go out and give away everything and become homeless. You know why? 
Because before I started traveling, I fucking hated the human race. And then when I started traveling, wow, people help you, they care about you, they bring you home, make you biscuits and gravy in the morning. It's like, wow, there's people that actually fucking care about me who don't even know me. Uh, and uh, and everything you love and care for can be taken away in a second, one second. You know, it's it's astounding how. Your life is so beautiful and nice, and then all of a sudden, you just wanna fucking jump off a bridge. I was never <laughs> at that point, but I'm saying, um, like, I don't, yes, yeah, just, I guess the best thing I learned is to not take shit for granted at all and I mean everything from being able to get ice cubes for water you know how much I love that in the summertime you, you I heard you giggle but really that's a luxury that a lot of people don't even fucking realize is they have that homeless people don't get and love when they do get in the summertime, oh my God, ice water. Oh yeah, this is so good, you know? Carpet, something soft in between your feet. Clean sheets. Oh my God, the feeling of, in the winter time, putting the sheets in the dryer and wrapping yourself up. Just those little things. People need to learn not to take that shit for granted. You know. All right. Kayla, well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Oh. Fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I shared a... a you, you live an interesting life. Yeah, I shared a lot that uh, I wouldn't normally share, but you, uh, for some reason, brought it out of me, so you're good at what you do. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's yeah, I know you're going to edit that out, but whatever.